Let's see what we can do with the horizontal axis. So if we click on the horizontal axis over here, you'll see it still says format axis, but the first bits are exactly the same. We can change the fill and the line, play with the way it's looking 3D wise, etc. You can play with the alignment. So those are all exactly the same as most of the other elements. But when we click here, you'll see that this is now different from the vertical axis. So there's a couple of things you can do. So the first one here is how you handle the axis type. Must Excel automatically select it? Is it a text axis or is it a date axis? Now this set of data is not going to show us what that means. So I'm going to just go to another set of data and just quickly show you that. So I'm just going to go here got some data, I'm going to create a chart, look at that chart there. Now when there are dates and valid Excel dates here, you'll notice that if I click on the horizontal axis and I go here to axis options, what Excel has decided is to automatically select it based on the data. Now notice here our data says 3rd of March, 4th of March, so it's got two numbers there, but if you look closely you'll notice that Excel has assumed that you want this to be treated as dates so it's actually put dates in here and made them blank. So this is vastly different from if I force it to be a text axis because then you can see it is treated that every line you just want to see once. So there's 3rd of March, there's a number, 4th of March, then it jumps straight to 8th of March and you don't split it there. So there is a difference between a date axis where Excel's filling in the missing days and then showing you the blanks. Notice as well is when it's a valid date axis you've got some minimum maximum bounds but you also can specify the units and the units will drive these. So you'll see maybe instead of showing the date every seven days I'm going to go every 14 days and you'll see our dates are now much further apart. We can also decide on the minor units and you can even decide on what the basis is. If I say months, you'll see this is very poor data because there aren't that many months and years will be even worse. But days you'll see goes back to that. So it's very important you understand that. If you let Excel automatically detect it, you may get strange situations like this where you want to see it next to each other and then these big gaps just change it to a text axis and then it'll do it'll act like a normal chart. Let's go back to our original example. Just click on there. So those are the axis options. You'll see you can also control where the vertical axis crosses. So this vertical axis crossing right here. Let's say for example January, February, March are actuals. April, May, June, July are forecast. So we want to clearly show that. I could say please cross at category. Let's try four. And you'll see what it's now done is it's moved the axes to here. And perhaps just to make it a bit better, we'll get rid of these grid lines here. Sorry, the vertical ones. And you'll see it's a lot clearer that there's something special about March to April. You can also go to at maximum category which means just take everything to the other side. Go back to automatic. You can even control where this data should come up. So you can see it says between tick marks. That means that there's a tick mark, then the data, then another tick mark. If I say on tick marks, you'll see it moves it so that's actually on the tick mark. You can also reverse the order so perhaps you don't want to see January to July can say so go backwards and you'll see it now goes July to January. So there's a whole bunch of things you can do there. You'll see we can also control the tick marks here. Let's just make sure we're in the right place. So you'll see these little tick marks here. At the moment the interval between them is a 1. We can imply quarters by maybe having the tick mark only every third month. So let's try 3 here. So you'll see we've got a little tick mark, so there's three months, a little tick mark, three months and a little tick mark. 
so you can use it like that again you can control do you want it outside or maybe if I click inside you'll see it switches it inside but let's stick to outside and if you had a minor you could decide it as well when I click on labels so again you've got a choice what is the interval between labels must Excel do it automatically what that means is if it can fit it it'll show January February March but if it's getting a bit tight maybe it'll show January skip February and show March if you actually want that to happen I can specify it and I can say please have an interval of two so you'll see now it only shows every second label I'm going to go back to automatic you can see you can specify the distance from the axes so I can for example if I type a thousand you'll see it moves lower down but in general we don't play with that too much because the label position can help us so in this case you'll see our labels are currently over our data because of a negative number that's because the position is next to the axes if I click on this and I say go low it pulls it down so that it doesn't overlap any series if I go high it at the top if I go none it goes away but I'm going to stick with the low one and the last thing you can do is you can change if there are numbers here you can actually change how it should be represented do you want to link it to source so those are the various things you can do on the horizontal axis